This is Dell's giant factory that builds AI factories. In Franklin, Massachusetts, Dell has a giant facility that is now focused on churning out the world's largest AI factories. These are super complex systems requiring large facility investments to even build. This facility has been upgraded to manufacture today's largest AI racks. And for the first time in decades, Dell is allowing cameras in this facility so we can show you all around and how these are built. With that, we got a lot to get to, so let's get to it. You may have seen many people in the industry talking about these Dell AI factories. So let's talk about this new Dell AI factory. This partnership between us is going to be the first and the largest generative AI go to market in history. We call it AI factories. Hundreds, if not thousands of racks acting as one single, single cognitive computer. AI factory. AI factories. AI factory. AI factories. It's just the beginning of kind of launching humanity into a new phase of opportunity and potential. Only at Dell World do you talk sexy like that. But of course, what kind of factory builds those AI factories? Now, the way this all came about is that Michael Dell sent me a note and it's like, hey, we make AI systems. In fact, a lot of AI systems. Patrick, you should go take a look. So of course, we have to say this is sponsored by Dell. So when you hear people talking about Dell's AI factories, what does that even mean? The idea behind the Dell AI factory is really to create these large systems that can churn out tokens at the lowest cost per dollar. By engineering the most optimized systems possible, you're able to generate the maximum number of tokens at the lowest cost. You're also able to do that at the highest levels of performance. So just as other factories are designed to maximize throughput and lower costs, the Dell AI factory is designed to do exactly that for your AI tokens. And so where some folks see metal, wires, cabling, tubing, all of those basic components, please understand that this is really Dell's feat of modern engineering. With that, let's get to the factory. So let's get inside the factory that makes AI factories and see how these things are made. So the first thing you need when you make an AI factory is you need a lot of components. And that was what comes in over here. In the receiving area, materials come off of the trucks behind me and into the factory. Now, one of the challenges whenever you get a ton of components is you get a lot of packing materials. But at this facility, all of the material is either recycled or reused. And let me give you an example of how that works. So if you look over here, you're gonna see this crazy set of cardboard and foam and all that kind of stuff. This is what all of the racks come in packed in and it's saved here so that way once the racks are manufactured on the manufacturing floor, they can be repacked using these same materials to lower the overall environmental impact. Now this manufacturing area is absolutely huge. You'll see a ton of racks that are being built all at the same time. And how that happens is if you look over here, you're gonna see that we have our components. Like for example, we have some big power cables over here. And on the other side, we have the racks that they're ready to go in. And just a fun fact on these racks, they end up weighing something like 3,000 pounds once they're fully assembled. And so of course, as you're bringing them through the manufacturing floor, that means that just transport is a challenge. So what you'll see over here is that we have the rack attached to its pallet. And these pallets are super fun because you'll notice that we have these orange shock absorbers. These are called shock pallets to make sure that all of the equipment stays safe. And leaving them on their pallets means that it's much easier to move these to all the different stations, but also the testing and then finally to the shipping area when these things need to go to customers. Now, the first step in the manufacturing process, once everything's been unboxed, is that the racks come over here. You'll notice that this rack has the entire infrastructure already put in place to go and build a giant AI server. For example, we have to have the rails for the servers. We need the rack manifolds. We have a lot of the power infrastructure being installed. Plus, we also need things like the CDUs and the management switches, all of that type of stuff before we put these super high value components in there and everything gets wired up. Now, in generations past, power and cooling was always important, but not to the level that it is today. This is an NVIDIA GB200 NVL72 rack, which means that the power consumption is somewhere in that 120 to 140 kilowatt range. And so in those generations past where this type of work might have meant that you're just throwing a couple PDUs in and you're throwing a couple rails in a rack, instead, the power and cooling infrastructure in this has become a lot more complex and a lot more important. And so the way everything is powered is that these power shelves that are up here and also down below these are really designed to provide all of the power that all of the components need so you don't need those individual power supplies 
And especially, you don't have to go and cable all of those. Imagine going and cabling two power supplies per node versus just doing a couple of large cables in the rear. It's much easier to manage, especially at this scale. And one other quick feature, you've seen the power shelves. And when these get installed, they connect to the bus bar in the rear. You can kind of see the bus bar up here, but it goes all the way up and down the rack. Now, the importance of that bus bar is instead of having two power supplies in each of the compute nodes and the NVLink switches and all of those components, instead what you have is just these giant power connectors down here. And these giant power connectors, they're the only things that you need to connect to your facility electricity. Another big feature whenever you connect the NVLink switches or the compute nodes into this backplane is not just the data or the power connectivity, but also the cooling. Instead of having liquid cooling that is designed to go into each individual ones that you have to go in and plug in individually like we've seen on previous generation designs, this has the liquid cooling manifolds in the rear with quick disconnects. There's both a hot and a cold side to the quick disconnects. Of course, the cool liquid comes in. It's then warmed by the components inside, either the NVLink switches or the compute nodes. And then as it exits the chassis in the rear, it goes to that warm side and then it is exchanged through the facility. And the CDU down below or the coolant distribution unit is really there to make sure that all of the fluid in the rack manages to circulate through all of the nodes, but then also the fluid can be exchanged with the facility water, and that allows you to efficiently cool the rack. So these two ethernet switches up top are used for features like management. There are a lot of features in this architecture where you need lower speed networks that are not the high speed, high capacity AI networks. Instead, you just need machines to communicate with each other their status. And that's really what these switches are for. And these are the Dell PowerEdge XE9712 compute nodes that have the GPUs, CPUs, as well as all the networking to make these work. Now in the NVL72 solution, you'll see 18 of these compute nodes surrounding the NVLink switches. And inside these nodes is the NVIDIA Grace Blackwell solution, which is the current generation. We have two ARM CPUs and four Blackwell GPUs. Plus we have the NVLink, which is the high speed networking out the back. We have our ConnectX networking as well as our Bluefield 3 DPUs, and we have our storage for those nodes. This system is designed to move data much faster than your standard servers, and that's why everything here is just a high performance version of what you might see in a standard server. And everything is so high performance that we have liquid cooling distributed all throughout this 1U compute tray. Perhaps the most defining feature of this generation and this design is really the NVLink architecture. That relies on a couple of key components, and some of the big ones here are just the NVLink switch trays that go in the middle of this. There are nine of them, which connect all of the different nodes that get plugged in. So these are the NVLink cartridges that are part of the secret sauce of this entire generation. Instead of having to go over optical links between all the GPUs and CPUs and everything in the architecture. Instead, you have these cartridges which have copper cabled connections, which are higher reliability, but also lower power than using optical connections. And so this combined with the NVLink switches as along with the compute nodes is really what makes this one giant GPU. Dell doesn't just make these integrated AI racks. They make all types of AI systems. And before we get too far, I want to explain why these AI infrastructure solutions are so different from mainstream servers. This next to me is a Dell PowerEdge R770 with a little bit of high speed networking. It has a baseboard management controller, two CPUs, and a NVIDIA H100 NVL GPU. This system can do AI, but of course it's nowhere near as complex as the integrated AI solutions you see from Dell. The Dell integrated rack scalable systems are completely different. Instead of just being a single server with a GPU and some x86 CPUs and all that kind of stuff, these systems are really designed as an entire rack and designed to be run with multiple racks connected together. In order to increase density and really drive down that cost per token, what has to happen is the entire solution needs to be designed at different levels, but all together. That includes everything from the power, the networking, the compute infrastructure, and even things down to the liquid cooling. And to ensure that every single component in these complex systems continues to work at high reliability to ensure that the entire system is reliable, that means that there is so much more complexity. A great example of that is this NVIDIA Bluefield 3 DPU, which is a north-south networking solution. You could call this a 400 gigabit ethernet class device, but let me give you another thought. This thing is so complex that not only does it have its normal networking, but it also has an out-of-band management port. It runs its own operating system just on the network card. 
So as you're watching this tour of the factory that makes AI factories, keep in mind that these systems are enormously complex. They have to be tested together and not just one rack with all of these components that are extra complex and extra fast, but they have to be tested alongside other racks as well. One fun challenge of making this factory a factory for AI factories is that the rack heights have actually increased. We're now at 52U racks and we're seeing even taller racks get made. And so as a result, the doorways behind me had to increase their height, just like what we saw on the shipping and receiving side. That's just a little thing you find out as you start making these AI factories. Now these systems have a ton of components. And one of the challenges whenever you build something with so many components is you have to make sure that they've all worked together properly once you've done that. And so behind me, we have the testing and validation suite and that is where the systems are and the entire racks are powered up and run through a series of validation tests. Now it is certainly pretty loud in there, but I figured let's go inside and look at what these systems look like as they're going through that testing and validation process. So let's go. Now this test and validation suite has a ton of systems being tested simultaneously. You're gonna see all of the engineers working on the systems while they're being tested at different phases. The other thing you'll see is that there's a ton of power going into this room. The reason for that is the AI servers use a lot of power and there's a future expansion project that will increase the power significantly. Now these of course are primarily liquid cooled systems. And so overall there's CDUs that can push something like 2000 gallons per minute to the chiller architecture in this building. Plus there's all the HVAC systems that just cool the air. And so if you come outside of the room, you're gonna see just a small sample of all of the piping. It looks a lot like a data center here because there are so many large diameter pipes moving water through this facility. Now these giant pipes are really here to move the warmed fluid that comes out of the testing in various areas and different parts of this factory out to the chillers and the liquid cooling towers. So water doesn't just go into this facility and get used for cooling and then is dumped back out. Instead, it's actually recycled after the heat is removed from it. Now, after the racks have completed their manufacturing journey, they end up here where the racks are repackaged and then they're shipped out. You'll see that we have the same cardboard that was being saved earlier is now being used to wrap up the racks so it can go on the truck and make it safely to its destination. Now this Dell Franklin factory is absolutely huge, but it also has a cool heritage. With over 700,000 square feet of manufacturing space. In fact, just give you some idea of how big that is. I took a brisk walk from one end of the building to the other on the second manufacturing floor at a pace that was fast enough for my watch to register a brisk outdoor walk and it still took about a minute and 47 seconds to walk from one end to the other. There are other features, like there are over 900 tons of chiller capacity here to support all the operations. This factory is just one of dozens in Dell's global network and just one of several in the United States. Hopefully we get to tour and show you a few more soon. And just another fun fact that I learned while I was here is that this facility was actually used for all of the really high-end Dell EMC storage arrays and also converged infrastructure. So that means that this facility has been essentially building the really high-end mission critical systems for years. That's why you have extra capacity to go test not only the liquid-cooled racks, but also air-cooled racks, as that's what we've been using for many, many years in the industry. It also means that there are some fun things that you'll see here. Like, for example, there's a Kennedy conference room. But this facility has another distinction. It is where all of the large AI systems from Dell are gonna be manufactured for North America. And so if you wanna talk about North American or more specifically US manufacturing capabilities for AI clusters, well, this is based in Franklin, Massachusetts. There are folks, of course, looking for US manufacturing for their AI clusters. And this is one of the few sites in the US that can build the large scale, many megawatt clusters. And with this facility's heritage, building large, complex and mission critical air-cooled systems, well, this is also a place that we're gonna see a lot of the AI systems that are not necessarily the giant liquid-cooled AI clusters, but also just the AI that will be found in a lot of enterprises that won't get to the scale that a lot of the largest AI players will get to. That kind of AI manufacturing can happen here as well because there's plenty of facilities for it. Now with all of our videos, I like to go over our key lessons learned. I mean, what do we learn from doing this tour? And to me, I think I learned a couple things. Number one, the process of building large scale AI infrastructure, like what we saw with these Dell IR7000 21 inch 
liquid cooled racks is not as simple as, you know, plugging a couple things into a rack or just unboxing some servers and throwing them into a rack. There's a lot more that goes into it. Now, while there are plenty of vendors that sell AI systems, Dell has a couple advantages. Number one, it's Dell, so they obviously have scale. You can see just by this manufacturing facility that's been around for a long time that not only do they have scale, but they have managed to burn in the process and really have a good process for building these AI clusters. The other thing though is just, frankly, it's in the United States. It's in Franklin, Massachusetts, which is a big deal. Now, Dell's giant AI factory is in Franklin, Massachusetts, which is probably best known for having the first public library in the United States after Benjamin Franklin, who the town is named after, donated some of the books that started the library. Now, for those watching this outside of the US that don't know Benjamin Franklin, he was one of America's founding fathers, signing all four of the major documents that really started the country. He was also the first person to use positive and negative when talking about electricity. And in other roles, he was also a US ambassador. And that's kind of relevant for our discussion today because Dell makes everything from AI PCs all the way up to these mega AI factories. And Dell also has a global manufacturing footprint. We're just kind of focused on the US here, but of course it's part of a larger manufacturing network. Yeah, that was just cool. We had to stick it in here. But I want to go one step further than the factory that builds AI factories that we looked at in this video. Now, I think a lot of folks know that I've toured some large AI facilities. And something I can tell you is that a large AI cluster is not as simple as just, you know, putting a couple boxes and racking them together, adding some power and, you know, hoping, hoping for the best, right? You really need that service and support to ensure that you are keeping these systems online and operating at their peak efficiency because you're really trying to drive as much value per system as you possibly can. The fact of the matter is that these things are not, you know, thousands of dollars per rack anymore. These are millions of dollars per rack. So you need these systems to be maintained and run at the best uptime they can. And that's really what Dell is putting a lot of focus on. Now, of course, we're looking at the Dell IR7000, which is really the high end of Dell's rack scale solutions at this point. But if you want to move downstream and you want to say, like, like, hey, I just want to put a couple GPUs in my servers or all the way down to workstations and even mobile devices that are also running AI applications. Well, Dell has an entire portfolio and that was one of the foresights that Michael Dell had many years ago, keeping Dell together while some of his competitors decided to split. And for those that don't know, when I was doing consulting, I did work on one of those big splits. And hey, I just want to say thank you to Michael Dell, Jeff Clark, and the entire Dell team for making this video possible. And this video shows the work of so many people who've been working for years and just they've never gotten to show off what they do. So hopefully they get to share this with their friends and family because, well, this is just awesome. So thank you to the entire Dell team. And hey guys, I love doing these tours. So we're going to be doing more of them on STH. If you have ideas, definitely put those in the comments. Also, if you just thought something was cool, let me know down below. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.